Coming up on Talk Pittsburgh, a high school student wants others to know there's more than one route to success. How she organized her own TED Talk with a long list of star speakers to spread that message. And a local painter transforms faces and bodies with her designs. She gives us an inside look at her work and the experiences she creates through her artwork. And we're celebrating National Wine Day. A local sommelier teaches us how to taste rosé like an expert. Hi. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us for Talk Pittsburgh. I was just asking you if you're working this weekend. I am. I'm working through the weekend and Memorial Day. So I'm on a little bit of a long stretch, but... um. It's okay. Yeah. And it's a hustle. A, it's a big holiday weekend. I know a lot of people are getting ready to travel, go away, unofficial kickoff to summer, all that good stuff. I know. I had to um, sort out my outfits and find all the red and blue ones. For this weekend. Yes. All right. I have some American flag shoes you can borrow <gasps> if you want them for Monday. Yes. I have them for you. Um, I should mention, too, like you might see this peeking out, so I, j I feel like we can't, we can't not address it. But it matches. Look my how cool this is. I Do you see it. this? Hey, it matches the flowers here, It too. does match the flowers. So we're going to explain a little bit more because we have one of the coolest women I've ever met. She does face and body painting. Mm -hmm. And she says it's not just for kids. Like if you if your kids are getting their face painted, it's not just for them, this is for you too. And one of the coolest things she does, have you heard of these maternity um, photo shoots no. where you can have your like belly painted? No. So just like regular maternity shoots. It's beautiful, Aww. it's beautiful. And so we're gonna share some of that and how she got her start and that's coming up. So if you see something poking out, that's why. I love it, it's beautiful. It's really cool. I know, okay, so you're working this weekend, yes. but there's a big music fest coming that we wanted to talk about because this is the first of its kind and we're really lucky that it's coming here. I wish I could go. So it is called Wonderworks. Wonderworks. And so th this is not the first one that Elevation Festivals has put on, but to have a weekend long, a two day music fest. This mm -hmm. is a big deal. Um, this is coming May 27th and 28th, so Saturday and Sunday. But the headliner on Saturday is Jason Mraz. I know. This is big. I know, and I love, I mean, think about it. Back in like 2012, he started, mm -hmm. and I Won't Give Up On You, yeah. and Lucky, and those are just so like, good songs just because you know I feel like that's around the time like I met my husband so it were all these really Aww, nice songs. So they mean something to you. They do they're sweet and then I just saw that he's coming out with a new song and it's completely different from it. Completely different but he's been doing different, music for so long style. but yeah. it's going to be good. All right and then I said <laughs> Hozier. No. No. That's not who's headlining on Sunday. Who I is watched there? like a 10 minute video to figure out how to say his name and Hozier. Like I've been saying it wrong. For years he now. said he did an interview and, and they were like, okay, can you clarify your last name for us? And he was like, no, but he was joking. <laughs> he was joking. So I watched everything and it was, um, someone said, okay, so my hose is hosier than yours. There you go. Now you'll always remember too, if you've been saying it wrong, it, but we, yeah. we wanted to show you some of the video from some of the other cities that this has been in. And it's not just a music fest. There's so yeah. much more to it. So they've been, um, so they've kept the wonder theme. So there was Wonderstruck in Cleveland. Um, and it actually started in Columbus, and that one's called the Wonder Bus Music and Arts Fest. And then they have Wonder Road in Indianapolis. So this is like a big Midwest mm. uh, music fest. We are now gonna be the Wonder Works Music Fest at Hartwood Acres this weekend. They have somewhere between 25 and 30 bands performing. They have several stages and that they're gonna food. be on. Food, <laughs> there's gonna be artisans, crafts, all of that good stuff there. So this, if you have uh, no weekend plans for Memorial Day and you're looking for something to do, I think there's gonna be plenty to see, hear, do. I know. If you wanna go out to Hartwood Acres. I, I would love to go, that's so much fun. Um, we have a story, I know a lot of pools open this weekend too, and we have a story coming up tomorrow actually about water safety. I, I was able to take Rocco to the pool to, we went to, um, uh, goldfish. goldfish. Yes, thank you. And so Fox Chapel. But this was the first time I had to put a swimsuit on this year. And uh, there, yeah. there I am, hunched over, so you see nothing. Oh. But you know, it's really hard. I started to think about this, why it's so hard to find a bathing suit. I know. And I, I think that it's honestly like you're wearing your underwear out in public. I know. So any insecurities that you have about your body, you basically have to come right out and say, this is me. I Whether know. I like it or not, you get to see all of it. And why do I feel like this is such an uncomfortable subject, but it shouldn't be. And like, I also found a swimsuit for Wally's um, swimming and I had to make sure everything was covered just because I'm carrying him around. And then- Right, you don't want anything like, you know. Yeah. So I know, it's, it's tricky with kids too, especially if you're still yeah. carrying them. And I just found out, so Heather, um, 
So Maggie asked me to give her pictures, and I'm like, Heather, where's yours? And she showed me, and I'm like, well, I kind of... Uh, you showed, went the different route. I went a different route. I wish that I would have found pictures <laughs> that I so, like this. So this is on the left, this is when you went on your honeymoon in Dubai? In Dubai, 2017, wow. right? And I'm like, take pictures of me. This is great in the water. And then Aww. I was pregnant with Viviana, our honeymoon baby, and I went in labor the next day. But I was just so, like, confident. Yeah. I and love that. And then I searched, and I could not find any pictures of me in a bathing suit because I'm After just... That. Uncomfortable. Well, and I don't know why we do this to ourselves, I, but I know like for almost all women, I, I mean, I have a group of friends that I text anytime that, and, and they do the same anytime yeah. we're shopping for swimsuits because it's like we need this approval. Like, yeah, that's okay. You can pull that off. I know. You know? I, I shopped for a bathing suit um, and I got one that was really cute for vacation and I tried it on last night and uh, I showed my husband and he was like, Oh, that's interesting. And it's so simple though, but it just swallows the gluteus maximus a little more than it should. And it's so hard, but like, I feel like back in the day, they were not made like that. Well, a lot of things have changed, but I, you know, our bodies change too as we get older and it's just like, just, it's accepting the things about our bodies and what our bodies are able to afford to us to do. Myself, love yourself, take another pic, more pictures. But because of all of this, I looked up tips on how to find the right bathing suit. So this is actually comes from, to us from InStyle Magazine yeah. uh, online. They had an article from a couple of years ago on tips and the editor said she realized after all of her time on the job that women dread shopping for a swimsuit. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We just, mm -hmm. we dread it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, consider yourself very lucky. So what she wrote is say yes to sophisticated neutrals and saturated brights. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as prints go, like geometric stripes, mm -hmm and uh, a couple right, others. I just you bought one that was neon. All right, yeah, so she says no. And this is as we get a little bit older, but also just because these are her tips and suggestions yeah, doesn't mean that this is for you. So her nose, neons, baby pastels, stark white, shiny metallics. I bought a blue iridescent bathing suit oh, for man. a year or two. Wow. Um, <laughs> And then psychedelic patterns, jungle florals. Oh, no to thongs. I just know, yeah, no to thongs. Well, and listen, you know, if- But if you, you want to wear a thong, wear a thong. <laughs> she also says, avoid tankinis at all costs. And I have to tell you, I, I have not purchased a tankini, but I remember very vividly being a teenage girl at yeah. the Shaler pool, Kiwanis pool. And Wait, why can I not so, image a tankini? Oh, oh, like a cami that's a tank top. It's like a tank top oh, okay. swimsuit. Yes. I don't know why they become they became very popular, and for whatever reason, the InStyle editor says avoid them. Mm. We're passing it along to you. Do what you want. But what I really love is Aerie, Aerie. Uh, from American Eagle. Aerie stopped airbrushing, stopped retouching back in 2014. Mm. I love and that. for me, I just think that this is. It's so important. It gives yes. me hope for the next generation. Oh, that gives me confidence. I love right? it. Like, it's okay for us to look any way that we look. Yep. Even if you think that you're imperfect, imperfect is just how we all are. Put on that bikini, ladies. I also appreciate that when you're shopping, if you go to Aerie.com, if you're like looking on their website, or even if you go to Instagram, they have this whole hashtag Aerie Real campaign. So that. you can share your pictures of what you look like in their swimsuits, in their brand. Mm -hmm. And then you can see what it looks like on a real person. Ooh. You know, I not like just that. a model, not someone that's been like signed up off on, that's you know? True. I love it. I love it. Talking about restaurants, this one's an interesting one. Do you guys take the kids out to eat? Um, we do sometimes, but we don't really like to because be it's an experience. Yes, it is. So there is a, a woman named Carly, a mom, um, and she had some recommendations on what she likes to do when she takes the kids out to eat. Take a look. Call me cheap, call me whatever, but if we're going out to a restaurant, I'm packing my kid a meal. I do this for many reasons. On Friday nights, my family and I get together, and tonight we're getting food out. Um, my son is not getting food out. For one, you want me to pay $6.99 for chicken tenders and fries that my son is going to throw half of it on the floor. You're crazy. Also, whatever I pack is probably going to be healthier than what the restaurant has anyways. Tonight on the menu peanut butter and jelly, bananas, mild cheddar cheese cubes, and a chocolate Lara bar. Mm. Also, when we get to a restaurant, my child is not waiting for anyone to take his order. He wants to eat now. I can just hand him this and let him go to town. Also, my child is not opinionated. Mm. He does not care what he eats. He just wants to eat. Now, if you said to me, yeah. I feel like we're gonna I have different thoughts okay. about this. Okay, so that her handle is Unbreakable Mama on Instagram and TikTok. Yeah. What are your thoughts on it? I was a server. 
And if you're going to go out to eat, if you're not going to buy the food, I mean, if you're going to do that, I hope she's cleaning up after her son or yeah. daughter. And I also, um, I respect that she's taking snacks. That's great. But um, if you do leave anything behind, like maybe tip a little bit of ex extra if like, you know, you're not going to clean up. Yeah. But it's an experience that you're going or give the kids some of your food. I really think this is age dependent. That's my thought. Yeah. I mean, you know, for, for a one-year-old, sure. yeah, you're going to bring baby food or something that yeah. they can munch on so that they're learning. It's for, for me, for the kids, it's more about socialization. That was a whole toddler meal. Yeah, it was. But, but here's the thing. So I talked to Carly. She's from Ohio about the attention, and it's been both positive and negative. Mm -hmm. She said that she never thought that this was going to go viral, that she posted this really as more of like a toddler hack. Mm. Um, and she said that some people have said like, oh, this might be a safety violation. But she thinks that overall, like, you have to do what's right for your kid. Yeah. And so whether it's allergies or that you just want to make sure that they yeah. eat. Like I take my kids out to eat, they'll order buttered noodles and then not eat them at all. And now they're hungry. Yeah, or pick a restaurant that um, all everyone would love the food at. Yeah, I don't know. It's a, I mean, there are a lot I'm of thoughts on it. I'm saying it's all from a server standpoint. I know, from a mom standpoint, I mean, this is just me. I think depending on the age, if they're under five, I yeah. think it's okay. I love I it. I think it's okay. Each their own. <laughs> to each their own. All right, stay with us because we have a lot coming up here on Talk Pittsburgh. And I'm trying to get there. The student behind the first ever TEDx event at Swickley Academy. We're telling you why she decided to organize this for her peers. And a contestant is joining us from a top cooking show, a national cooking show. We're telling you why she decided uh, to come in here to make us a delicious dessert perfect for the summer season. And